Hey everybody and welcome back to D-Ray Shop. Well today Randy and I are going to be troubleshooting an electric starter on an ATV. Now the particular machine we're working on is a TRX 300, but the procedures we're going to be using will pretty much apply to most all ATVs, motorcycles, and sides. So let's get started. Alright, we're going to troubleshoot this thing now. And what we've got here is you got your battery, then you have your starter relay or starter solenoid. And that's where you're hearing that clicking from. And what this thing does is you have your battery voltage here, you have the, the cable goes to this side of the starter relay. Then when you depress the starter button, it's a magnetic switch inside that. It makes contact from this terminal to this one that goes to the starter. Okay? So now Randy's going to hook up a test light here and we're going to check this circuit and see what's working. Now he's hooking the, the test light to the ground on the battery. And now he's going to test it on the battery terminal, make sure we got good voltage there. Yep, it's good and bright. All right. Now from there, we're going to go to the battery side of the starter relay and make sure we got voltage there. And we do. Okay. Now, now he's going to go over to the other terminal here that goes to the starter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the switch on. And then Randy's going to push the button. And while he's doing that, we're going to look at this light here. Okay. So that shows that our relay is working correctly. So now we're going to move down to the starter and we're going to make sure that we're getting voltage to the starter itself. Now here's our starter on our TRX 300 right here. And you can see just back behind that is where the battery terminal connects. Okay. And what we're going to do is we've already got the boot pulled away from it so you can expose that terminal. And what Randy's going to do next is he's going to take his test light and the ground's still hooked up to the battery. He's going to probe that terminal right there and I'm going to hit the starter button. That shows we're getting power to the starter. Okay, so we know we got a, a problem with the starter itself. So now the redneck way to verify that we have a problem with the starter is pick up the old hammer. And Randy's going to take that hammer handle. And I'm going to hold the start button down. And when I do, he's going to bump that starter. And we'll see, if, see what happens here. Lucky there. Now. <laughs> okay, so now we've verified that our problem is with the starter itself. And by bumping that starter with that hammer handle, what that tells us is that either the brushes themselves are either worn down or they're actually sticking in the brush holder. And by bumping that starter, it kind of jars the brushes and makes them make contact and it'll actually start working. Good little trick to know if you get off out in the woods and you get the old click, 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 nothing happens. So now we're going to remove the starter and disassemble it, show you what's on the inside, and show you how to repair it. Now to remove this starter, all you have is two bolts back here on the back side of the starter. We'll take those two bolts out, take that terminal loose, and then we'll show you how to remove the starter itself. Now typically on most starters, once you get all this hardware loose here on the back of the starter, Normally you can just pull the starter straight back and out. But now on this TRX 300, uh, the snout of the starter is made a little differently. It actually has a bearing that it rides in. So what we're, we're also going to do is we're going to remove this cover here. And there's going to be a set of reduction gears. We'll remove those reduction gears and it'll get that nose that starter out of that bearing in that cover. And it'll make it easier to get that starter up and out of there. And be sure to catch all the gears as they fall out. <laughs> okay, what, what we got here is this is the cover I was talking about. And there's that bearing right there that rides right there on the end of that starter. And that's why you got to take those gears out of the way to get that starter out of there. Now, we did have a couple gears fall out, but it's no big deal. This is called your intermediate reduction gear. Then you have, this is the one that fell out. This is our main gear. And it has a washer on it. And the washer goes to the outside and it splines onto the little starter shaft right there just like that. Okay, now we can go ahead and pull that starter motor on out. There you go, just like that. Nothing to it, was it? Nothing to it. All right. 
All right, now we've got our starter on our workbench here and we're gonna get ready to disassemble it. But before we do, uh, Randy's gonna pick that thing up and show you there's a couple of marks right here on the starter case. And it's very important that all of these components go right back in the same orientation that they are. Uh, these marks can be kind of vague and confusing. So what I always like to do is uh, take a Sharpie and just make you a line anywhere on that starter. Make you one line on the front and then go over on the back side of it and make you two lines. And what that does is that orients the nose to this end of the magnet housing and the tail section to that end of the magnet housing. And that way we know we'll have everything back in proper sequence and we'll go to put it back together. So uh, now the only thing holding the starter together is you got two bolts on either side here. Randy's gonna take those apart and we'll start splitting this starter motor. Okay, yeah. now that he's got the, the housing bolts loose, uh, next we'll go ahead and, and move it, remove that starter nose. Just kind of wiggle it around a little bit there. Well, the back end's going to come off first. That's okay. All right, we're going to set that aside. Now, what you want to watch for when you go to take these components apart is you're going to have shims. Sometimes the shims will stick here in the end of the housing but on this one here, you can see that they're actually on the armature. And there's no set number of how many of these are gonna have. Sometimes they may have one, sometimes they may have four or five, but you wanna be sure to remove those shims and hang on to them, because we're gonna need to put those right back where they come from. So we'll set those aside and check again. Yep, so there's another one hiding right there. Yep, so there's another one. Okay, so we got all the shims out. So next, uh, go ahead and just pull the armature right out of the housing. Just pull it straight out. It's gonna be magnetized, so it's gonna be kind of kind of heavy. It'll turn loose all at once. There you go. Okay, so there's your, your armature. And now we'll go ahead and separate that housing. Get rough with it. Come on, use your muscles. Sometimes you'll have shims on this end also, as we do right here. So you wanna be sure to retain those shims. Check this armature again. Make sure there's no shims there. Okay. All right, and there's all of our parts right there. Now we're gonna clean these up a little bit and uh, I'll kind of give you a little closer view of them and show you how they work. Okay, now we've got our parts just roughly cleaned up. We'll do a little more cleaning on them just prior to putting everything back together, but I did want to show you a few things. This is the armature out of the starter. Uh, this is called the commutator, and it has these segments. That's what the brushes run against. When you take the starter apart, one of the first things you want to look at is inspect that armature and make sure that commutator is in good shape. Now, we'll, we'll clean that up and slick that up. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but if you pull that starter apart and this is all messed up and burned up and just looks like it's pretty much trash, then you need to just stop at that point and look at getting you a, another starter because you can't get this armature by itself. You have to buy the whole starter assembly and if this armature is bad, then it's not really gonna be fit to try to rebuild it. Okay, now Randy's gonna go ahead and start taking the brush assembly apart out of the back end of the starter. Now all you got is just one bolt there. He'll back that off and then under that bolt is gonna be a washer and a series of insulating washers. And that's what helps insulate that terminal from shorting out on the side of the, uh, the starter housing. Now, as he sets that stuff aside, yep, you'll have like two or three insulating washers. And there's also gonna be an O-ring in there, but we won't see that until we probably pop that uh, brush plate out of there. Okay. Go ahead and, there you go. Take that hammer handle and give that just a little whack on the end there. There you go, all right. Yep. And there's your brush, brush plate. And as you can see, there's your little uh, insulating O-ring right here that insulates it to the housing. Uh, I'll flip this over and kind of give you a closer shot of it. What this brush plate does is you have your brushes here. This is your positive one and this is the ground brush and it has a set of springs on it that pushes the brushes up against the commutator. And as you can see here, that brush right there, you can just see it's just barely protruding from the holder there. 
because those brushes are just, just slap wore out. Okay, all right. Well, now we've got this fully disassembled, we're gonna go ahead and give all these parts a real good cleaning, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna rebuild this thing. 